each of the session is very important. Actually, I have too much I want to talk about, and uh, we don't have enough time in the four days. So it's important that you really take notes and remember, and also I will ask you to uh, respond, and explain what you've learned, and then give it to me in clear English, and then I will grade you, and then uh, for those who pass, I'll give a certificate. So I hope everyone will take this seriously. It can help you, it's just not, not just for this week, it's for your whole lifetime, for your whole ministry. And I thank God for these teachings which God has given me through the years, and you'll find it very helpful and very important. Now this first session is the, the most important foundation. The balance of the grace and the law of God in our life and in our ministry. The balance. How to keep a balance. To have the grace and the law of God. And this is one teaching that I noticed that most teaching I have found have, don't, don't have this balance. Uh, because most people live under the law. Now, when we grow up, the parents tell us, be a good child, if not, I don't like you, I don't love you. And you have to behave well. And after uh, people get married, it's always saying, oh, husband, you didn't do your job, you didn't do so well. And then they talk to the wife, the husband talk to the wife, and you don't do a good job, you didn't do well. So always demanding. Now people would think when they believe in Jesus, they will have grace, the grace of God, the love of God. But the fact is, you know, when we first believe in Jesus, people will tell you, Jesus loves you, Jesus died for you, and He forgives your sin, and He gives you eternal life. But in the actual Christian life, many Christians will say, I did not pray enough. I did not obey enough. I'm not a good Christian. And some of the Christians are better. And also Christians can be critical and say you didn't love God enough, you didn't, you know, you didn't obey God, you didn't do evangelism. Uh, and in the message of many, many uh, pastors, it's a lot of law. You have to do this, you have to do that. Now let me tell you, I follow the law also. I obey the law totally as much as I can because I want to make the best use of my life. And the Bible has told us that if we sin, the worst things can happen to us. In, in John 5.14, in John 5.14 it says, Do not sin anymore, lest the worst thing will happen to you. So I realized that if I want to make the best of my life, I want to live in the love of God and the holiness of God. But the most important thing is, I'm motivated by the grace of God, the love of God. It's most important, motivated by the love of God. Let me use an illustration. When someone falls in love, I believe many of you have fallen in love before, and, and then when you fell in love, what happened is you, you'll be thinking about your girlfriend or boyfriend all the time, right? You'll be dreaming about him or her, you want to see him or her all the time, and as soon as you get off work, you might rush to see him or her. Now, for many people, falling in love is like that. But after they get married, it starts to change. It's always saying, you didn't wash the dishes, you're not doing a good job, you don't listen to me, you don't want to spend time with me. It's a lot of law. And so, for many husbands, they say, they have this feeling. I'm just saying this as a fact, a matter of fact. Many husbands will say, well, in their heart, if my wife goes back to her home, her parents' home, for a few days, it's a break for me. <laughs> then I can relax more because my wife won't be nagging me. So, in many people's marriage, it's always a lot of law. I have to do this, and if you don't do a good job, then there is yelling, fighting, nagging. Now, 
for many people too, and they think of God, they say, I haven't obeyed God enough. I haven't loved God enough. And God doesn't like me. Many people think God don't like them. And they think God doesn't like them. And I want to say it's very important that we are motivated by love. It's like when we fall, fall in love. When we fall in love, we're willing to do anything for the boyfriend or girlfriend. Because at that time, we really enjoy the relationship. But after marriage, it has to be work all the time, every day, work. And for many Christians, they say, there's so much to do, I cannot do a good job. And God doesn't like me, God is not pleased with me. So there's a lot of pressure. And today I will talk about how to live in the love of God, motivated by the love of God, and be willing to obey God in every way, to have a balance of the grace of God and the law of God. Okay, now there are many Bible verses that talk about the grace of God, the love of God. And I want to say this. We all believe in God's love. We know. We know God loves us. But the point is, a lot of us don't think deeply about how much God has done to love us. How much love He has for us in order to give us eternal life. Most of us don't think deeply about that. And that's why a lot of times we, um, we forget about the love of God and we just say, well, God doesn't like me that much now. But what I want to say is, when we understand the Bible verses, we want to understand that He really has a heart of love for us. Let me show you one Bible verse in Matthew, chapter 9, verse 20 to 22. And I'll read only 22. Matthew 9, 22. Now please write this down if you want to pass the test. All the Bible verses and now, um, the important concept, uh, you want, want to write down, but you might not be able to write down everything. Matthew 9, 20 to 22. There was a woman who had bleeding for 12 years. You probably are familiar with that passage. Uh, you don't have to turn to it. You just listen to me because you're, you, don't, you might not have time to turn to it. You just listen to me. And this woman has bleeding and she has used up her money. She has used up all her money. And so she, she was desperate. And she heard about Jesus healing the people. And she, when she heard about that, she has a secret plan. The secret plan is to go behind Jesus secretly because she was unclean. According to the law of Moses, she was unclean. She cannot touch people. Yes. But she wanted to touch Jesus so that she can be healed. But in order to touch Jesus, he, she has to touch many people, right? Because there were so many people, such a large crowd behind Jesus. So she intended to just touch Jesus and then be healed and then get away. So nobody noticed her. But then Jesus said, who touched me? And she was afraid she didn't say anything. And the disciples said, why did you ask who touched you? Everyone is pushing against you. And then Jesus said, someone has touched me because I feel power leave my body. And the woman must be very afraid, right? She said, wow, Jesus knew I touched him. And so she was afraid. So she told Jesus that it was her. But when she told Jesus, she might have a fear. She might be afraid Jesus would say, how, how dare you touch me in secret? You are unclean. You have touched so many people. You have offended the law. And how can you do that? But instead, Jesus said to her, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Now, these three phrases are very important. Take heart. That means relax. Don't worry. I know your feeling, your fear. You have worry. You have fear. But don't worry. Relax. Because I care about you. I care about your feeling. Now from this response of Jesus, we see that Jesus was not, you know, was not keen on accusing her. Jesus was not keen on accusing her. Jesus just wants to let her know, relax, don't worry. I care about you. You don't have to be burdened. 
Now, what does this show about Jesus? I have a, another teaching called God's Nature Bible Study and God's Nature Preaching Method. I will talk about this in a few days. But I will talk about it here briefly. For every Bible verse, we can find out the nature of God, the attribute of God, but not just in a theological way, but in a personal way. That means Jesus cares about her feelings. Jesus has a deep heart of concern for our feelings. Jesus has a concern and feel about our feelings for each Christian and each pastor because most pastors are under burdens. Because most pastors carry the burden of the whole congregation. They're not loving God, they're not obeying God, and the pastor has a lot of burden. And I have to do well in the ministry, and the ministry, ministry is not going so well, there's a lot of burden. But Jesus said to every pastor here, every Christian here, relax. Everything is in my hand. I care about your feeling. I don't want you to serve with burdens. Oh, it's so difficult. Oh, a lot of pressure. Jesus doesn't want us to serve like that. Because first he wants to say to us, all you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. First, we need to have the rest of Jesus. We need to have the life and the joy and the love of God before we can serve God with joy. Jesus doesn't want people to be burdened and always yelling at people and saying, you didn't do so well. He wants us to relax and say, everything is in God's hand. And when people have the love of God, and they understand the love of God, and they understand the law of God, then they can, they're more motivated to serve God. So Jesus first said, take heart. That shows God's nature. His nature is, He is very relaxed Himself. God is very relaxed. And He cares about our feelings. He wants us to be relaxed. He wants us to enjoy God. He wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to be motivated to live a joyful Christian life. And then the next thing Jesus said was, Daughter, daughter. Now that woman might not be a good Christian. The Bible didn't say anything about her. She was weak. She was burdened. She was weary. She might not be strong spiritually. And she might feel unworthy. This woman feels unworthy because she has not, she was not uh, healthy and clean, and so she felt unworthy. But Jesus called her daughter. This shows the heart of Jesus, that Jesus wants to have a close relationship. God's nature is like this. He desires relationship with his people. He desires relationship with people. So he called her daughter. That shows his acceptance of the people. He shows acceptance. Don't, don't turn it down. Only when they raise the hand and then turn it down. So, Jesus wants to have a close relationship with you. And then Jesus said, your faith has healed you. This is very important. What is faith? Faith is just, yes, I believe, Lord. Yes, I believe you can heal me. Yes, I believe you love me. Faith is doing nothing. Faith is trust in God only. It's not our work. A lot of times we say, I have to work hard. Yes, we have to work hard. But it starts with faith. Faith, now for many people, they think of faith like this. I have to believe very strongly. I have to believe very hard. I have to believe in my whole heart. And that is good, but that's the most, that is not the most important nature of faith. The most important nature of faith is like this. Let me say this to you and you can write this down. When God has promised, I trust in Him. When God has promised, I trust in Him. That's faith. When God works, I trust in Him. That is faith. Now these two statements are very important. I hope to write this down. When God promised, I trust in Him. When God works, I trust in Him. This is very, very important definition of faith. Because many people think of faith as, I have to believe very hard. 
It's like my work. I have to work very hard to believe very strongly. Yes, we can work hard to believe strongly, but first we have the basis. It's God who is trustworthy. When God promised something, He will do it. When God works, we don't have to worry. He will work. He will finish His work. When God promised something, when He says that when we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins, He will do it for sure. We don't have to worry. If we truly are repentant, He will for sure forgive us. God's promise He keeps all the time is like when you turn on the switch, now when there is electricity, I know in this country sometimes you turn on the switch there is no electricity, but if there is electricity, when you turn on the switch, will the light come on? Yes. Will the light come on? Yes. It will. Amen. The switch will obey you 90% of the time, is that true? 90% of the time? Yes. Is it 90%? 90%? I, I mean, when there is electricity, does it obey you 90%? 100% when there is electricity. And for God, He follows His rule, His promises. When it says when you confess your sins sincerely, without the intention, tomorrow I will sin again. Now some people say, okay, I asked Jesus to forgive me, but tomorrow I'll, I intend to sin again. That is not repentance. But when we are truly repentant and we know sins brings destruction, Sin will break destruction. If we re really believe that and repent, God will for sure forgive us. We don't have to worry. So that is God. Whatever He promised, He will do. You can put it this way too. Whatever He promises, He will do. So that's why Jesus said, your faith has healed you. When you have faith, He will heal you. So from this statement of Jesus, take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. We can see that God really cares about her and about each one of us here. No matter how big a problem a person has, no matter how big the problem is, when a person comes to Jesus and says, I need you, Lord, I need you, Jesus will say, don't worry, son or daughter, I forgive you. When you believe in me, I forgive you and I give you a great, wonderful life. God has promised. With Him, everything is possible. He can raise up our spiritual life and raise up our life to be blessing many people. Let me tell you, my ministry mainly is to raise up people to serve God and to train people to serve God. So with this teaching in these few days, you can Lift up yourself and also lift up other people and say, if you have a real heart to trust in God, God will raise you up to a higher and higher level that you can never believe that it will come true. And I thank God. God has shown that to me and to many people who really sincerely love God, that He really wants to raise people up. Let me share with you a few stories. When I went to South Africa, one time, there was one woman who came to me and said, Pastor, I saw you the night you were about to arrive. I had a dream and I saw you. And she never had a dream of Chinese. But in her dream, she was chased by someone and she was afraid and she was running. And then she went to a house and then she saw inside the house there was a little Chinese boy. And she knocked at the window to ask him to let, him, let her come in. And then when she came in, there were a crowd of Chinese praying. And then I appeared. She saw me in a dream before I went there. And then I said to her, can I pray for you? And she said, yes. And a woman I laid hand on her in a dream. She was filled with joy and love and she woke up laughing. And that was the dream she had the day right before I came. You know, I came on that day and she had the dream the night before. Now, she's not the only person that saw me before they saw me face to face. There were about 10 times people saw me in the dreams or visions before they saw me. Because this is a confirmation from God. I'm saying, I'm not saying I'm special. 
I'm not saying I'm special. I'm saying God is special. Say it with me. God is special. God knows who loves Him. Say it. God knows who loves Him. When we have a heart to love God, God knows your heart, and God will honor you. And one time I went to another country in Africa, and I, I missed a plane because I miscalculated the time. And I went to the counter, and I asked the person there, I, I was supposed to get on the plane half an hour ago, and the plane has left. What can I do? And she said, you have to go to the rebooking counter to rebook your ticket. And I went there, she said, because you booked your ticket in Hong Kong, you have to call Hong Kong to try to figure, to find a way. And then I called Hong Kong, and then the person said, well, it's very complicated to rebook the ticket. Can you see if you can find a way there? So I prayed to God, God, please help. Please, you have the power to do it. Because I've seen miracles many times, I said, you have the power to do it. And then I went to, I prayed, and then I went to the counter again. I said, please make a phone call for me and ask. See what can be done. And then she made a phone call, and at the time she called, her eyes and her mouth were wide open. And then she said, the plane has come back. Amen. And later I, I asked the people who got off the plane, I said, what happened? The person said, the plane just could not take off, and then the plane had to come back. I'm saying, when we honor God, when we really love God, God has the power to do anything for us and to bless Nigeria and to bless your ministry and bless your whole life. Amen. And He can do everything. Amen. Because God respect and honor each person. Each one of us is very important in His sight. No matter how weak we are, He wants to raise you up. Let me tell you, I came from a family, a poor family, because my father gambled a lot. And my father had an affair when I was seven or eight years old. And then my stepmother came, and there was a lot of yelling because my father gambled a lot and lost a lot of money. And my stepmother had to buy rice with mold, sometimes mold, on the rice. It's cheaper and wash it and then cook it, then we can eat it. From such a family, how much education can I have? But after I became a Christian, I was, I was really excited about Jesus. Every day I woke up, I said, there's heaven, there's God. God is so real, and I told all my friends about Jesus. I told my, I told my stepmother, my stepmother yelled at me and said, don't ever tell me about Jesus again. But later I, tell her, I told her again and again and again. <laughs> And God saw that in my life. And God prepared for me that I can go to Bible college and then go to seminary and have two master degrees in theology. And give me a lot of chance to study. And now I, I am basically retired because I don't receive any salary. I haven't received salary for a while because God provides for me. But I want to use my life for God. I go to different countries. Guess my age. How old am I? Guess my age. 65. They heard it yesterday. Now, some of you heard it already. Don't, don't say it from yesterday. Don't, 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 don't say it from yesterday. But if you just look at me, I tell you, I'm 67. But God keep me healthy and strong. <laughs> and I play tennis. I play tennis. And I have I don't need eyeglasses. I can read small letters without eyeglasses. When we love God, God will honor you and bless you. And He provides for me so I can go to different countries to do mission work. So what I'm saying is, if we really believe God is saying to us every day, you know, I say this to myself many times. I would say Relax, take heart, son. With faith, God is pleased with you. God is blessing you. So, many times I would say this. God is blessing you. God is calling you his son. Now, let me tell you another story. This story ought to motivate you, to encourage you. There was one person, one uh, pastor's wife, who, who brought a few people to be delivered to me. 
And one of the persons she brought had demons. So it drove out demons from her, and then she started to hear the voice of God. And also, she started to go to heaven in her prayer. She went to heaven a few, a number of times. And then, when she was in heaven, one time God showed her her book of record of rewards. That means, what's written of her, that what she has done for God, and God will record what she has done, and then God will reward her accordingly. And then she was very curious, because I was a pastor who has helped her spiritually. And she said, can I see the book of record of reward of Pastor Yip? And an angel took the book, and then she said the book was thick, and was covered with gold. And also on top it says, my beloved son, and then my name. When I heard that, I said, God, I'm not worthy. You know, I'm not saying I'm worthy at all. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm saying I'm not worthy. God raised me up when I was weak. God raised me up when I was sinful. I'm not worthy. But when I experienced God, I was very excited, and I responded to God and said, this is the best I can have. And I responded to God, and I really want to follow God totally. And then God started to download many teachings to me. Many, many teachings. And recently, a seminary asked me, can they print one of my books? I, I've written in a document. They want to print it because they said this is very practical. And so God is opening the way for me that I can bless more people. And God can use you also. So I was so thankful to God, and I'm very humble to say, Lord, it's not me, it's you. I thank you that you will say, my beloved son, and then my name. I'm very thankful and help and, and really appreciate God. And if you really sincerely love God, God will honor you that way too. Now I'm going to talk uh, about a few verses about God's love so that we, it will sink in our mind that God really loves us very, very much. That God really honor us and He respect us. Okay? Now, in Psalm 139, verse 5. Psalm 139, verse 5. You can write this down. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. So what it says is, you are in front of me and behind me, and you have laid your hands upon me. Now what this verse says is, God is always in front of me and behind me. God is always with me. And He's with us, not just to, you know, some people are afraid of God. They say, God is going to see all my sins. Now when we have sins, we ask God to forgive us. And we really want to repent and change our lives. We don't have to be afraid of God. If we have sin, we just say, Lord, I hate the sin, please forgive my sins. But what this verse says is, God is with us all the time. He's in front of us and behind us, and He's laying His hand upon us. So He's with us all the time, and He's blessing us by laying His hand upon us. But some people may say, how can I know God is doing that? How can I know that God is doing that? Let me ask you, when we have sinned, in John chapter 16, verse 8, there it says that the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, has come to, uh, uh, to bring us to, uh, you know, to, acute, uh, to bring us to a condemnation, uh, not condemnation, to be aware of our sin, of righteousness, and the judgment. To bring us awareness of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Let me ask you, when some of us are weak spiritually, when some of us don't have a close relationship with God, have you noticed the Holy Spirit speak to you? Does the Holy Spirit forsake you when you sin? When we sin, does the Holy Spirit forsake us? He doesn't. So when we are weak, God doesn't leave us. When we are weak, when we have sinned, God doesn't leave us. 
unless if the person sin continually and don't repent. If not, God will continue to convict him of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. So, when we sin, God doesn't forsake us. How about when we love God? When you praise God, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Do you have peace and joy coming to you? Now, for me, every time when I, after I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998, when Carlos and Condia from Argentina in South America laid hands on me, I experienced a great, great love filled my heart so powerfully. And then I spent a long time praying, and every time I pray now, I can experience peace and joy and love and power going through me. Then I see God is with us all the time. When we are weak, He is with us. When we trust in Him, He is with us. When we worship Him, He is with us. So He is in front of us and behind us all the time. And He is ministering to us all the time, laying His hand upon us. And every day He works in our life. Every day He works in our life. Every day He guides us. Now let me ask you this question. Does your wife or husband minister to you all day long? Does your husband and wife stay with you and help you all day long? No. no. But we should be thankful for them to help us. But they cannot help us all day long, right? Because they cannot do it, they have to do other things. And also they don't have the patience, right? They might have the patience. But God has the patience. And now God can really take a nap in heaven. He doesn't have to minister to each person all day long. He doesn't have to do that, but He chooses to do that. He's a servant God. He's a servant God. He continues to bless us. Can you see this heart of God? Have you noticed how God could work in your life? There's so many times God has worked in my life, I'm so thankful. One time I was driving on a freeway in the middle of the night, and I did not see there was ice. Because most of the place on that night there was no ice, but in one place there was very thin ice on the road. And while I was speeding, on the freeway, suddenly the car turned. It turned and go to one lane and then go to a third, uh, the, the, the middle partition of the two sides of the freeway. And immediately when I stopped, a big truck passed me. So if I had spent one split second earlier, I would have gone to heaven already. So God was with us all the time. He blesses us all the time. Have you ex have experienced similar? Yes. That you can see God's hand on you? God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is with us all the time. So we can all relax and say, God is loving me, God is with me all the time. Instead of saying, oh, I haven't done good enough. I'm not a good Christian, I'm not a good pastor. Now, it's true now, please turn off the phone. Now, it's true, many of us are not very faithful. But when we repent, God is happy to forgive us and accept us. So, we don't have to say all day long, I'm weak, I'm sinful, I cannot do anything. If we do that, we have no strength. If a Christian, a Christian always say, oh, God doesn't like me, I cannot come up to his standard, because his standard is very high. Now, many people say, his standard is too high. I can never please God enough. But let me tell you, God has told us that it's not hard to please Him. Now write this point down. It's not hard to please Him. Why? Because you remember in, in Matthew 10, 42, 
Matthew 10, 42, it says that if anyone, because of the name of the sign, will give a cup of cold water to a little one, by no means you'll lose your reward. So even when you give a little cup of cold water to a little one, you will not lose your reward. That God will remember it. Please turn off the phone, please. Do you know how to turn off the phone? That phone keep ringing. So, that we know that um, even when we do a little thing for God, God is very happy. Then you say, well, then I just stop and give him one cup of cold water. But Jesus has given us, given us a lot of gifts. We can use the spiritual gifts greatly. So if God is happy with one cup of water, I want to do more. But what God is saying is, God doesn't look at what we have not done. God will look at what we have done. Say this with me. God doesn't look at what we have not done. God does not doesn't look, look at what we have not done. But He will look at what we have done. But He will look at what we have done. Now, if we haven't done well, we ask God to forgive us. And truly repent. And then I say, Lord, I love you. And then, and then God said, Eyes have not seen, and ears have not heard, and the human heart has not thought of the good things God has prepared for you, for those who love Him. So God will prepare good things when we love Him. So when we love God, God is very happy. When we pray to Him, He always comes to us. When we serve Him even a cup of cold water, He will always reward us. Is that easy? Is that easy? Yes. Yes. Now it doesn't mean we can take Him lightly. It doesn't mean we can sit lightly and say, well, it doesn't matter, I ask Him to forgive me. He will forgive me and so I don't have to worry, I can continue to sin. Let me tell you, God will forgive, but sin always have consequences. Sin always have consequences. It will break up your family, it will break up the church, it will break up your conscience, it will break up your spiritual life, it will stop you going higher and higher. So it's very important that we don't think that God loves us so much I can sin anytime I want. Sins are very terrible. It will destroy our life. Sins will destroy our life. But we can all enjoy God and say, whatever I do for God, God is very happy. Whenever I pray to Him, He is very happy because He accepts us all the time. So the verse I just quote you, Matthew 10, 42, it shows that God is always positive. Whenever we do anything for Him, He is very happy to accept us and reward us and He'll remember it. So that way, we have strong motivation and we say, God loves me, I can relax, I can enjoy God, I can think about the God, the love of God all the time, I can be blessed by God, and every day I can say, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice, 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 and again I say, Rejoice, 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 and again I say, Rejoice, Hallelujah! <laughs> Because God is always happy with the person who is sincere to love Him and follow Him. Because God is, first of all, He loves us very much. He cares about us all the time. He's with us all the time. He's ministering to us all the time. And He wants us to be children, daughter and sons, and He wants us to relax and he wants us to believe that with faith, things great things will happen to us. That with faith, faith will heal us. Okay, another Bible verse, Isaiah 49, verse 15 to 16. You, uh, verse 15, you probably know this verse very well. Can a mother forget a baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Isaiah 49, 15. Now how many of you are mothers here? Can you raise your hand? How many of you are mothers here? Then you have children, mothers. You understand me? Okay. If you are a mother, if you are a mother, can you raise your hand? Okay. Let me ask you, mothers, 
Have you forgotten your baby somewhere when you go shopping? No. When you took a bus, did you forget the baby? Did I forget the baby in the bus or somewhere? No. Have you forgotten your umbrella? Yes. yes. You have forgotten your umbrella somewhere, right? Yes. But have you left your baby somewhere? No. <laughs> because the baby is deep in your heart, right? Yes. Even in the middle of the night when you wake up, you will think about your baby, right? Yes. Because God has put that nature in you. Because God is full of love. Why do people and also animals, have you seen the chicken take care of the babies? The chicks. One time I saw a, a chicken about this large. And she had two chicks under her wings. And the chicks were this large, this large. They were very large already, but they still sleep under the wings of the mother. So it shows that in animals, we can see that in dogs and cats and lions and tigers and birds, they all have love toward the children. Because God is love. God cares about us all the time. So all day long you can say, God is thinking about me now. Now say, God is thinking about me now. God is thinking of me now. God wants to bless me now. God wants to bless me now. Hallelujah. So we don't have to accuse ourselves, right? We don't have to keep saying, oh, I have sinned. Now, we have sinned, we'll ask God to forgive us. But we'll believe that God for sure will forgive us. There is no one, no one can accuse us anymore. No one can accuse us anymore. So we don't have to accuse ourselves. Many Christians live in accusation. Even many pastors, they say, I haven't done a good job. My church hasn't grown enough. And then we feel guilty. We feel insufficient that we're not doing a good job. But today I'm going to tell you that with God, He loves us, He accepts us, He wants to bless us. So all day long, we can live in the love of God. Now there are many Bible verses we can talk about. You know, I, because I'm going to talk about the law also. So I'm going to stop here. But I, I will talk about where can we see God's love? Write this down. Five areas we can see God's love. Five areas we can see God's love. First area, in nature. When we look at the food we eat. Have you noticed how God created different kinds of food? All very delicious. And also they are good for our health, right? Do you like food? Do you like eating? Yes. That's from the love of God. The whole earth is full of the love of God. You can see God's love in the food, in the sun, in the breeze. And in our nature, human has love and care and righteousness that's why there's righteousness generally in a society, generally. Also, there is care of people. Because God is, you know, God has created us. He put love in our hearts. So we can see God in nature, God's love in nature. Do you like to see flowers? Flowers, butterflies, birds, beautiful birds? Do you see beautiful birds here in this country? Yes. Yes, all this is created by God or enjoyment. Second, how can we see God's love? We can see God's love in the Bible. The Bible has many Bible verses about His love. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now, there's some sound somewhere. Because I, we need to concentrate. Okay. Now, so what I want to say is this, that um, in the Bible we can see many Bible verses that talk about the love of God, and one Bible verse in Romans 8, who can separate us from the love of God? You know, if you have a cell phone, you know that your cell phone signal can be separated from you sometimes, right? Then you might not have cell phone signals. But wherever we go, even when we go to the moon, we can experience the love of God in the moon. So we thank God for that, the Bible. Third, 
God's love we can see in Jesus' redemption. That Jesus died for us. He, didn't have, he did not have to die for us. The Son of God did not have to come to the world to die for us, to give us eternal life. And number four, we can see God's love when we pray and when we worship. We can experience His joy and peace that came from His love. So every time that you pray and love, praise God and you feel joy and you say, Thank God, hallelujah, you're loving me. Now for me, every time I pray, I can experience His joy. I thank God for that. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Because God is full of joy. God is full of joy. So whenever we come to Him, we can experience joy. And number five, we can experience God's love when we pray for help in difficulties. Sometimes even before we pray. In our difficulties, we can experience His help in our daily life. So in these five areas, if you count, from nature, now I'm going to ask you this in the test. From the nature, from the Bible, from Jesus' redemption, from when we pray and praise God, we can experience it, and also from uh, His help in times of difficulties. Now, let me introduce you three kinds of prayer that will help us to experience His love all the time. Three kinds of prayer. There are other kinds of prayers, but three kinds of prayer that will help you. The first kind is prayer of grace. Prayer of grace. Then we can say, God is loving me. God is watching over me. God is caring for me. God is with me now. He is laying his hand upon me. He is in front of me and behind me. He is laying his hand upon me now. Hallelujah. <laughs> so every time we pray, we can declare that. Now many people when they pray, it's like this. Oh God, I'm in trouble. Please help me. Please help me quickly. I'm in trouble. Don't forget me. Many people's prayer is, is saying, God, you're not helping me fast enough. Where are you, God? Why didn't you help me? But from the Bible, we know that God is helping us all the time. He's in front of us and behind us. And He's laying His hand upon us. He's with us all the time and blessing us all the time. It's just we don't receive it, or we don't have faith to believe that. But if you have faith, any time you can experience His help. Any time, if we all day long love God, we can experience His presence all day long. And we can receive moving of the Holy Spirit from Him all day long. And we can receive strength from Him all day long. So first kind of prayer is prayer of grace. God is blessing me, God is helping me, and especially when we hear from God, we can say, God is speaking to me now. God is guiding me now. The second kind of prayer is prayer of worship. I love you, Lord. I worship you, I love you, I adore you. And I also put in wording like this, Lord, I need you. Lord, I hold on to you. Lord, I like you. This is a more personal prayer. I hope you can put that in the prayer and also in your worship. In your worship. You can lead the worship like this. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, we love you. We hold on to you. We hold on to you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. We can put it more said stronger. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I hold on to you. And you're right here. Because God wants us to have that close relationship, right? When you have that close relationship with God, God will bless you in many, many ways. And a third kind of prayer, interactive prayer. Interactive prayer. I-N-T-E-R. A C T I V E. Active. And then you add inter. Interactive. Now in the internet you heard heard the word interactive, right? You push in a key and it will respond. That's interactive. I-N-T-E-R and then A C T I V E. Now what is interactive prayer? It's actually combining the two and say, every time I pray, God hears my prayer. God is happy. God responds to me. God is very happy that I pray to Him. 
So every time we pray, we say, God is happy with me. God is listening to my prayer. God is blessing me. Hallelujah. <laughs> that way, we have strength. But many people, they pray, they will say, God, where are you? Please help me. Let me ask, let me, let me share this with you. Sometimes people ask me, I have a certain sickness. Tell me how I could pray for healing. I said to them, it's not how you pray. It's your relationship with God. When you have a close relationship with God, He will heal you because God knows your needs before you ask. And God will take care of the sparrows. God will take care of the lily in the fields. He will also take care of you. When we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to us. So, I do pray for myself, but I don't pray much for myself. Because I know God already has a plan in heaven. If I just love Him and obey Him, He will put the plan in action. I believe God cares about my healing, my body, everything. Well, turn off the echo. There's an echo here. I notice there's an echo. Turn off the echo. Now, I know God cares about me. God opens the way for me. So I just said to God, God, guide me in my ministry. Open the way for me. You have a way to open the ministry to bless more people. And my ministry may need to raise some people to serve God and to raise some people to train other people to serve God. My main ministry is not just bringing healing to people. I want to bring healing to people too. But the most important thing that is long lasting is raise you up. Then you believe that God loves you and cares about you and you can do great things for God and you can enter a higher level ministry and you can train others to go into higher, higher level ministry. And in order to go into higher level ministry, we must all relax in the Lord. First, come to Him and put down all the burdens and worries because it's God's ministry, it's not our ministry. Say it with me. It is God's ministry. It's not my ministry. I'm just a servant. I'm just a servant. It's His ministry. Does He care about His ministry? Yes. He cares about His ministry. If I just submit, first I relax. Now, but many people serve God, they serve God like this. They, they serve God with too much, too much pressure. Too much tension. That way, people don't see the joy of the Lord. But when we serve God, we can serve Hallelujah. <laughs> we can enjoy the love of God, and then people will be attracted to your ministry, right? When you can relax, hallelujah. You don't have to keep telling people, you have to give more money. Now people, you know, I, I really, I want to say this. I hope you don't mind me saying this. Sometimes people, more way people to give by saying, if you give one dollar, you get one thousand dollars back. It doesn't always work like that. But I would say, if you give with a sincere heart and with a joyful heart, God is very happy and He will pour blessing in your life. Now, it might not be $1,000 for $1, but He will bless you in many, many ways. And your life will go higher and higher. We don't have to use money to entice people to give. We tell people about the love of God. The acceptance of God, the plan of God, the wonderful grace of God, then people would want to follow God. Because He is full of kindness and goodness. He is full of goodness. Our Lord is wonderful. He's full of goodness. So I hope now this prayer, interactive prayer, I was talking about the three kinds of prayer. Interactive prayer means when I pray to God, God is very happy. Now, let me look at one verse first with you. 7 9 3, 17. You write this down, please. 7 9, that's a minor prophet. 7 9, 3, 17. The second part. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now, this verse is very important. I hope you put it in memory. John 3, 16, you can remember, right? Now, this is 3, 17. Zephaniah 3.17 There it says that God will take great delight in you. He's very happy with you. He takes great delight in His children, in those who love Him. And He will quiet you with His love. 
He will soothe you. He will comfort you with His love. He will give you peace and joy and love. He will soothe you. And also, He will rejoice over you with singing. Let me ask you, how many people rejoice over you with singing? When people see you today, Wow, I'm so happy to see you. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Do they rejoice over you with singing? Oh, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you. Do they sing for you? No. I sing to my wife all the time. Because I treasure God, I also treasure everything God gives me. I sing to her all the time. I say I, I say love to her all the time. I want to keep what God has given me. I treasure what God has given me. And I treasure the ministry. I treasure my body. I treasure everything God has given me. And God is happy with us. He rejoices over us with singing. So whenever we pray, we can say, God is rejoicing over with me with singing now. God is very happy now. God is happy because I pray to Him. God is happy because I rejoice in Him. God is happy because I serve Him. Do you like this kind of Christian life? These three kinds of prayer that will help you. Now, I know many people sometimes feel down in the heart for no reason. Has it happened to you sometimes? You don't know why. You just feel unhappy or pressured. Then what can you do? You can say, God is loving me now. I can rejoice the Lord. And then when I rejoice, God is very, very happy. God is laughing. God is rejoicing with me. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. So we have interaction with God. Do you believe that God really rejoices over us when we pray to Him? Yes. The Bible says when one sinner turns to Him, what happened in heaven? Amen. The whole heaven rejoices. So if we love it, will the whole heaven rejoice? Yes. yes, the whole heaven will rejoice. Not only when one sinner turns to Him, but when any Christian loves God, the whole heaven rejoices. So these three kinds of prayer, now I will ask this in the test. Please remember and use it. And these few days use it and see if it changed your life. And also learn to love God from your heart. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> now learn to love God first with your soul and with your spirit. Your soul and your spirit. Your soul includes three parts. And write this down. The mind, the will, and the feelings. The mind, the will, and the feelings. Love God with the mind. That means my whole mind agrees that God is good. God is wonderful. I love God with my whole mind. That's what the Bible says. Love the Lord your God with all your mind. And then all your will. Yes, I want to give my life to God. How come at 67 years old I still want to go to different countries? Because I want to serve God more. I want to bless more people. Actually, I found that the older I am, the more wisdom and revelation God has given me. I thank God for that. So I cannot stop and I don't want to stop. Now many people retire at 70. I, won't, I don't want to retire at 70. That's three years from now. 80, I don't want to retire. 90, I don't want to retire. I want to serve as long as I can. If God gives me 120 years, 120, I will live to 120 and I will serve God till I die. When I die, when people come to visit me, I'll say, can I pray for you now before I die? <laughs> because I just want to bless people. 